Dying Light 2 just got a big patch update and is going to be continuing to add more and more events going forward. So let's have a look at the best settings that we can get to run this on Steam Deck. This is running the direct Steam version with Steam OS and Proton Experimental. As you can see from the frame rate at the start here, I'm getting around 35 frames per second and the frame time between 16 and 30 milliseconds. Now, this is pretty much the best that I can get it and I'll show you the exact settings here. But let's have a look through some of the other settings as well. So let's drop this down from FSR Ultra Quality and a mix of medium and high settings to full custom settings, as this was also running under DirectX 12, and it wasn't much of an issue over DirectX 11. As you can see here, it does bounce around between 30 and 40 frames per second, and that frame time does sit around the 30s most of the time. But even in the combat, it is very fluid and does hold that 30 frames per second quite steady. However, the AMD FSR with ultra quality mode here on the medium settings does give it a bit of a graininess effect in some of the instances and it is a little bit noticeable especially in some of the bigger combat scenes with lots of blood splatter and can be a little bit off-putting but on the Steam Deck screen itself it's fairly noticeable and medium settings really do look quite nice here and you'll see how bad this gets when we drop down to low in just a second. So what happens if we keep those medium settings but we drop that upscaler from the FSR to none at all. Well, we see the frame rate drop dramatically here and it gets quite stuttery. So even just moving around, we're into the 20s already and now in the combat, we are in the mid 20 frames per second and it does get a little bit jumpy. You can see that frame time is also creeping up to over 40 milliseconds. So although it is fairly stable around the mid-20s, it does really feel quite jerky, especially because of that frame time. So I do recommend at least having some upscaling enabled, if nothing else, to keep that frame time down. Let's go down to the default low quality, and this by default turns on FSR quality mode, but everything else pretty much on the lowest. You see that the frame time really improves, but the frame rate not so much. We only pushed up to 40 frames per second here, but the frame time has come down into the 20s. It does feel a lot smoother. However, there is a real big drawback with going to the low effects, which you'll see here as one of the status effect procs. It looks absolutely hideous. I'm not quite sure why the low effects do this, but they become this pixelated block mess in low and really ruins the effect of the game. That's actually flames and some sparks that are supposed to be coming off there. And instead of any type of recognizable flame, they become these horrible looking blocks. So if we go back to the medium default settings here and put FSR on ultra quality. Now we do bounce between 30 and 40 frames per second with the frame time between 20 and 30. However, this does give the smoothest looks and all of the status effects at least look normal. And some of them actually look exceptionally good, especially with the blood spatter effects. So going down to low really does ruin those status effects, but medium does hold a good solid 30 here. So you could cap your refresh rate down to 40 as well, just to bring that frame time down a little bit more. But if you're not, then you'll just have to keep it at 60 or uncap and deal with the 30 millisecond frame rate. I hope this was useful to you and I hope you guys dive into Dying Light 2. It's always an absolute blast every time I dive in and I can't wait to get a lot further in the story. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.